So I have this batch of yeast, and I want to do at least four different batches with it, and I'm not going to be able to do them all on the same day, and I also kind of want to have a little leftover in case I screw up. So this is what I'm going to do to make that all possible. So the yeast in question, it is Omega Yeast, O-Y-L 200 Tropical IPA. And as you can probably guess from the name, I'm going to make a couple different versions of a tropical IPA, or at least what I hope is going to be a couple different versions of a tropical IPA from it. This will be interesting. I'm going to try to do it without making, uh, without throwing fruit in it. I can make an IPA and throw mangoes and passion fruit and pineapple. I don't want to do that. I want to do it with hops, malts, water, and yeast. So if you don't know this yeast, it's an interesting yeast in a couple ways. It's a, I'll, I'll read a little bit of the description here. Tropical IPA produces delicate, tart, tropical mango and pineapple fruit characteristics with a clean finish. Here's where it's interesting. It says, try it at higher temperatures to bring out the tropical profile. And here on the back, right in the temperature range, it suggested temperature range is 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 to 29 C. That is incredibly warm. And I did not know that buying this. So that's another layer of kind of experimentation I'm going to be doing with this here. A couple of the characteristics, low flocculation, 85% plus, it says, uh, attenuation. That's a lot. Alcohol tolerance, 10% ABV. So that is uh, the yeast. Now let's figure out exactly what I'm going to need to pull off the four batches and kind of have a couple safety nets with me too. So we're going to do a couple things here. First, we're going to figure out how many cells, yeast cells I need to achieve what I am trying to do here. Then I'm going to figure out how many are in that pack we just saw on camera a few moments ago. And then we're going to figure out how we're going to make up the difference if there is any, which, spoiler alert, there's going to be a difference. So I am on the yeast pitch rate and starter calculator at brewersfriend.com. Its whole name is, you can see it on the screen, just type in yeast pitch calculator and then go to the brewersfriend.com link. That'll be much easier than reading this out. So, all right, let's take a look at what we got here. I'm going to make some assumptions here because I haven't actually made the beer yet. We're going to assume that my starting gravity for the beers I'm going to make, the four beers, are about 1.06. Uh, some might be a little less, some might be a little more. We'll see. I want enough yeast to do six gallons, even though, as you'll see, as this particular sub-series goes, I'm only going to make four gallons, but I want two more on hand for uh, just to get two more... I'd say two, gallon, two more gallons worth of yeast in case something goes wrong, or if I really like what I do and just want to tweak it a little bit. A billion things can go on here. Now, this is where we're in kind of uh, guessing territory. Liquid packs. The coding on this website is assuming 100 billion cells per liquid pack. Omega Yeast says they can have anywhere between 150... Or I'm sorry, yeah, 150 billion to 500 billion. So... According to the, where I got this pack of yeast, it said there's 150 billion in this pack. I'm going to go with that. There could be more. So we could end up propagating a lot more yeast than we need. And there's a way to figure that out. I don't know if we'll be exploring it through this thread line, but it is something that I intend to cover on this channel somewhere down the line. Manufacturing date. I put the pack away, but I did see that it was manufactured on October 17th of this year. So let's put that in, and now we're going to hit update, and just off screen, we'll see the numbers that we need. So, we have 92 billion cells in that pack. We need 251, so we're short almost 160 billion cells. Like I said, spoiler, that was going to happen. So we're going to hit this graph from above, and it's going to pull down the cells available number, and we're going to move on here, and we're going into the starter. Now, uh, we do use the stir plate. Uh, the gravity is probably about 1.04, but I'm going to go ahead and use the 1.036 they have pre-populated in here. And we're going to see what doing a liter and a half starter is going to get us. So it's going to get us 308 billion cells. What do we need? We need 251, 61, 251. So that's a little high. Uh, I mean, nothing real wrong with having more than you need, but we don't need that much. And why go through the uh, extra work to make that. So let's try 1.2. That gets us to 265, and I think that's where I'm going to stay. Because yes, it was 251 we needed. 
I'm going to see what 1.1 liter gets us, but I really like the idea of having an extra 10, well, 14 billion cells, I guess is what that comes out to. Yeah, okay, see, now we're we're splitting hairs here. So let's go to 1.2. That is, that's going to be a liter. That's uh, going to be 1,200 milliliters. So we're looking at 1,200 milliliter starter. So let's get that prepared and go on to the next phase. So like we calculated, there is about 1,200 milliliters of water there. It's actually closer to 1,350, maybe 1,400 milliliters. That's account for the boil off, because we're going to boil this for 10 minutes once it gets boiling, boiling which is any second. And uh, there's a really easy calculation for how much dry malt extract. It is 100 grams per 100 liters, so this is 1,200, so it's 120 grams. So once this is up to a boil, I'm going to stir that in after I take this off the heat so I don't boil over. And then going to keep going back and forth here and then going to uh, boil it for 10 minutes cool it get it into the flask and pitch the yeast i mixed in the dry malt extract which really did take two hands so i couldn't really film it but now you can kind of see the uh close to end result in another nine and a half minutes while the end result it'll basically look like that but reduced down so yeah i could sit here and film this boiling for 10 minutes, or we can do a quick jump ahead. All right, I just cooled it as you saw, and I poured it into the flask over the sink off camera, and check that out. Just over 1,200 milliliters, and that is everything that was in the boil pot. I dumped it all right in, so gonna get the yeast in there, put it in the stir bar, get it on the stir plate, and Get this yeast growing. All right, it's ready, and I'm really weary about doing this with one hand, but here we go. I'm trying to move the camera so I can actually see it with my eyes and not have to look through the screen. All right, there we go. I didn't look at the camera screen. I have no idea what you saw. Hopefully that went in. Oh, actually, that's quite nice. I took a Little check of the aroma, what's less than, left in these. Wow, lighting in this room is awful. I'll have to work on this. Sorry. First one, as you can see, my shadow. Hello, I am the shadow assistant. All right, we got it in there. Now we get the stir bar and get this stirring. And then uh, that, I think, is about it for this phase. Okay, stir bar is in there, and we got it turned up. And that's pretty close to center, and it's not making all that much noise. Let's see if we can hear it. Usually I get a Stir bar in there just clanks and clanks all night, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna leave it right where it is, let this go for about 36 hours, and then decant it into, wait, is that right? Uh, separate it, uh, pour it into the vials I have set aside for this project. And just a quick note, I, oh, I can do it a little better. There we go. Kind of hand crimped some sanitized foil on there to let oxygen in, but still cover the top, so that is that on that. I decanted the yeast to just under 800 milliliters. That's how much I'll need to fill these vials. These have all been sterilized in their caps. So I'm gonna grab that funnel and do that now. There's one, two, three, four, five, and there is six. Six four ounce vials of yeast, each with about 40 billion cells in them, give or take. Three of these, maybe these three, maybe these three. Three of these I'm gonna use for three tropical IPA recipes I have ready. One of these I'm gonna use for a completely different style. In fact, it's a, it's a blonde ale, real basic, mostly malt, just a little bit of hops to make it a beer basically. And that's gonna, I think my intention is to see what the yeast alone adds to that tropical IPA flavor. So that's what that's for. The other two, are in case one of these vials are messed up or I mess something up, if I don't, then I have two more vials to maybe propagate some more yeast or do some other uh, experimental batches or other recipes with. So that is it for this episode. We're gonna go on to actually making the four beers and see what we get from this yeast. And I'll add that to a playlist that this, this video will kick off or if you're watching these as they're released, 
That should be in about that, uh, I should say that series should start in about a week with the first beer. So thank you for watching. If you don't want to miss those episodes where I make the beers from these vials of yeast, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the little alarm bell so that you're notified when those episodes come out. We have some more episodes with some more experiments, uh, more yeast focused episodes and uh, some more small batches. And then along the way, some big bets as well. So yeah, that's it for this episode. So I'll say again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.